And Disney Plus launched this week, and I, of course, subscribed to the service. I paid for like a two-year subscription, which got me a pretty good discount on everything overall. They had a pre-order period for that. Uh, but then I learned that my Verizon cell phone account would have gotten me the first year for free, so I totally screwed that up. So if you have a Verizon phone, uh, subscribe through that because you'll get a year of this service for nothing. And I'm sure that made up a good chunk of the 10 million subscriptions they claim to have already received on the service. But I've been very pleased with it. There's a ton of content here. Uh, the first thing I jumped into, of course, was the Star Wars section uh, because I was very eager to check out The Mandalorian. Uh, this is a great Star Wars show, a lot of fan service in here. Uh, it kind of lacks the grandeur of a motion picture, uh, but the set pieces are great. The detail on the sets are awesome. I was really enjoying the show, at least the first episode, and I think I will enjoy the rest of them. A lot of the uh, Star Wars figures I had as a kid that were not often seen in the films are going to be uh, making their little cameos in this show, and I already saw a lot of little things in the uh, show here that brought back some childhood memories and made a lot of smiles appear on my face. So I watched the first episode. I'm going to watch the second episode tonight. Uh, my one gripe is that if you have an NVIDIA Shield, the new one that supports Atmos, it doesn't yet support Atmos on Disney+. Plus. And I noticed that the audio on The Mandalorian was not very punchy as a result. So I'm going to hook up one of my other uh, multitude of TV boxes tonight and see if we can get Atmos on that one. So I'm getting back to the point now where I've got multiple boxes depending on which service that I want to get in the most ideal way. Uh, Atmos is coming to the Shield, but it isn't yet available. Uh, but the content offering, of course, is uh, quite extensive on Disney Plus because you've got the whole of the Disney library here. Uh, they bought 20th Century Fox, so you have all of those films as well. I was surprised, though, when I went to the Star Wars section, they had just about everything uh, but they don't have The Last Jedi, which surprised me because I thought they would be giving you everything. And actually, uh, the new Han Solo film is missing from this as well. Uh, but they have other things like The Clone Wars, including the uh, special that they had uh, before the TV series began. They've got some of the shorts that they've done with the Lego figures and stuff. Rebels is on there. Uh, they don't yet have the second season of uh, Star Wars Resistance. Uh, so that one will probably come out a little bit later. So I was, again, surprised that we didn't get the full library because I thought that's what they were going to be offering, but there is still a ton of Star Wars content on here. I haven't watched a lot of the Marvel movies, so this might be a good opportunity for me to catch up on that. Uh, and then what I liked about it is that if you dig in enough, you can get all of the movies that they have on the platform. So if you don't want to go through all these different genres, uh, you can just get an A to Z list of every film that's here. Uh, so that was nice because sometimes with Netflix, I don't feel like I can find the full list of things that are around. Uh, likewise, with the TV series, you have the same uh, thing here where you can go A to Z and just find whatever you want. Uh, they have a different profile for kids. Uh, so right now we've got the Darth Daddy here going. So if I switch over to my daughter, Kira, uh, she gets her kids interface here, which will be more age appropriate and she can find her favorite princesses or watch some of the superhero stuff that she watches. So this is all really nicely laid out. And I, you know, I think it's kind of Spartan at the moment, but that's okay because the content's here and there's certainly a lot more content here than what you'll get on some of the other services out there that might cost more. I'm thinking about uh, Apple TV Plus. Maybe Apple TV Plus is about the same cost, but there's not much on that service yet. Uh, CBS All Access has a good amount of stuff, but I don't think as much as you got here. I uh, even have the full 30-year Simpsons run here available to you to watch anytime you want. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time in Disney+. Plus. It supports downloading for offline viewing, which is great too. So I'm going to be taking a short trip this weekend, and I'm going to be loading up my phone with some offline content, a lot of it from uh, Disney Plus here, and I'll continue to update you as to how the service is coming along, but I think they've done a great job with it, and I'm very eager to hear your thoughts down in the comments below, and that will be our Q&A for you this week. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.